A linear condition describes an object that you need measured in linear feet, inches, or meters, such as a wall, conduit, or continuous footing. To create a condition, navigate to the Conditions panel on the left side of the screen and click on the blue plus sign icon in the bottom left corner. This opens the Condition Properties window. In this window, you define the condition's name and dimensions, as well as indicate the quantity results on which you want to report for the condition. This window includes five fields of information at the top, as well as a few tabs below, which allow you to see different information. Begin by choosing the appropriate style of the condition. For this example, let's choose Linear. It is vitally important that you choose the correct style for the item you're trying to build, because the style defines what dimensions and quantity results you can establish for the condition. Next, give the condition a name. You can put as much detail as you want in the name, but keep in mind that there is a Notes field at the bottom where you can enter more detailed assembly information. After you name the condition, you can assign a type. A type is simply a category you can assign to help organize conditions together with other like conditions. You can either type an option into the field, or you can click the magnifying glass icon to the right to select a type that has already been entered into your database table. Beneath the type field is the layer field. Here, you can assign the condition to a specific layer. Layers then allow you to hide or display specific conditions as needed. See the video on layers for more details. The last of the five fields at the top displays a condition number. This number automatically populates and increases by one with each new condition that you create, but you do have the ability to enter a custom number if needed. Now, let's take a look at the fields located within the General tab, starting with the Dimension fields. If the item you are creating has a height associated with it, you can enter that here. This allows you to accurately calculate square footage. This is commonly used for walls. When entering dimensions within on-screen takeoff, it's important to know that the program reads the last two digits as inches when the job is set to imperial measurement. For example, if you're creating a 9-foot, 6-inch high wall, you would enter that height as 906. The system then reads that as 9 feet, 6 inches. When you press Enter, the system converts the display to show appropriate feet and inches symbols. The same formatting rules apply to the thickness field as well. Thickness can be used to indicate how wide the line appears when you draw takeoff. Or it can be used to help calculate volume for items such as excavation trenches or continuous footings. Next, you have the option to indicate slope on your linear condition. This is indicated in rise over run format. The Appearance section allows you to designate how the condition displays when you take it off on the plans. First, you can assign a color for the condition by clicking on the color box. A variety of basic colors display, but you can also select from custom colors along the right. Once you've selected your preferred color, then you can indicate a desired pattern. You have multiple options, with transparent appearing the most like a highlighter or colored pencil where you can still see the plan behind the takeoff. Once you've set how the condition displays, then you can indicate what measurements you want to calculate for it in the results section. The first quantity result for a linear style condition always defaults to length. You can select the dropdown to change that quantity to measure segment count, surface area in a variety of different fashions, or volume. This list is unique to linear conditions. You can choose from the same options for quantity 2 and quantity 3 if needed. Once you choose the quantity to report upon, you must then also choose the appropriate unit of measure to the right. At the bottom of the window, you can add notes for your condition. This allows you to more easily distinguish similar items from each other and indicate specific assembly or construction details to help you price the item out later. In most cases, this is all the information you need to enter for your condition. Note, however, that there are more options available for you within the Advanced tab. If you're using the Digital Production Control product, you'll also have a Labor Codes tab available. Consult the user guide for more information on the options within these tabs. Select OK to save your changes and close the Condition Properties window. The condition you created now displays within the Conditions panel on the left side of the screen. You can then select the condition and begin performing takeoff. For details on how to perform takeoff with linear conditions, see the video on performing linear takeoff.